Okay, this is Raymond, and this uh, this is a um, DC-powered swamp cooler that I built based upon plans from uh, Jim, who posted um, his original plans on his unit online. And um, anyway, I have a DC-powered cabin, and I needed evaporative cooling. And I didn't want to use an AC unit, which would be a much, a lot, much larger drain on my battery system. So this thing worked out perfectly. Um, he posted the uh, plans. Jim posted the plans online for free, which was really cool. And uh, it's taken me a while to get all the resources together, but um, I've got a working unit. And I just wanted to show you uh, how it's working out. Um, I bought the overall unit for 50 bucks from a hoarder in the desert with way too much crap on his property. I found this, sold it to me for 50 bucks. Um, the AC motor internally was completely rotten and no good. So I didn't really want to replace it since my cabin's DC anyway. So I just, uh, just basically ripped the motor out of here and I got rid of the pump, the AC pump as well. That thing was just fried. So this thing will live its days as a, as a DC powered evaporative cooler. Um, here's the DC pump that I got. Uh, it's a 500 gallon per minute little tsunami, 12 volt. And it went from, I think, half uh, inch tubing. I adapted it down to the half inch that the spider tubing uses. You can see. And that's going up the spider tubing to the spider. And normally on this unit, this unit was small enough that it originally had just one of these arms per pad. I put two arms per pad for more flow. And since, since this DC pump is slightly more powerful than the AC pump that was in it at 400 gallons per minute, it can handle it fine. And I've sort of overclocked the, the pads, which makes them wetter, which makes everything colder. And it's just really nice and frosty when I stand in front of it. So now there's uh, there's um, two of these per pad, two of these arms, and that takes care of the spider. The wiring goes from the DC motor up through a hole inside the vent area and back over here, and this turns the pump on and off independent of the fan. That way I can turn the pump on, get the pads nice and wet before I turn the fan on so I'm not blowing hot air into the house. That was also in Jim's design. I'm going to go ahead and turn the uh, pump on. You can see water coming out. And normally this would be hooked up to the water line at my cabin, but I just have it I'm just filling the basin right now with the bucket since I don't have it actually hooked up to a um, pressurized water system. It's working just fine. I just have to remember to keep filling it up. So a lot of good pressure coming out of the, um, the nozzles there. I'm going to set the camera down and put the pad back up. Okay, so the second part of this is the actual uh, DC radiator fan um, is pretty much mounted in place exactly the way that uh, Jim's plans had suggested to do so, the same way he designed his or the same way you design yours. And I also bought some of that inch and a half foam insulation and I cut it and pushed it around the edges of the fan so that I knew the fan would truly only be sucking air from through the moistened pads and not drawing it in, not drawing warm air from around the sides of it. So that's what this insulation pad here is. Um, here's the fuse coming out from uh, the main positive right here. And like I said, there's the switch to turn on just the pump. And originally I went with the secondary switch like this to turn on the fan, but the fan was either fully on or fully off, and fully on these fans are actually kind of loud, so I found something on eBay, a 
12 volt variable speed controller and I just hooked this up about a half an hour ago and I have to say it's pretty awesome so I'm gonna go I'm gonna go ahead and turn the fan on now on high And I'm going to turn it down. About seven volts. I can adjust it any speed that I want. And the switch goes to fully off so I didn't even need the original switch to shut the power off the switch will actually shut the power off completely as evidenced by the multimeter going to zero I'll crank it up again right now it's about 90 degrees 92, so it actually feels pretty good. So anyway, I'm going to leave this thing on for about an hour and stress test it and um, see if anything gets hot or weird. And um, thanks a lot.